So we're doing, I asked why in class students on Thursday, if, if there was anything they wanted me to do more of on Monday. And I'm now doing this. I was asked for products and quotients and trig functions. So let's take some derivatives. Here's h of x equals x squared times the sine of x plus the cosine of x. And let's find h prime of x. And we need to recognize when we're doing these problems, sort of what we have. I mean, we know how to deal with all sorts of things now, powers and quotients and sums and differences and products. But of course, we need to be able to recognize them. And what we've got here primarily is we've got one expression and a second expression being combined via addition. So what we know, the sum rule, is that if we have expressions being combined via addition or via subtraction, we just find the individual derivatives <coughs> and we add those individual derivatives. And now one of these individual derivatives, let's not obsess about this orange, one of these individual derivatives is hopefully pretty straightforward. If you haven't memorized the derivative of the cosine by now, you need to make that a priority. The derivative of the cosine is the negative sign. So that doesn't require anything special. But now we have x squared times the sine of x, and we need its derivative. And you heard that word times when I said this function out loud, we've got something times something, x squared times the sine of x. And that's therefore a product. We've got multiplication. And in particular, We've got this x squared being multiplied by the sine of x. And because we have this multiplication, that calls for the product rule. And the product rule says, take the derivative of the first function, at this point, unless someone raises their hand and asks, I'm going to just assume that everyone in this room can use the product rule and can go from x squared to 2x without a lot of explanation. That being said, you can always ask if you're confused by anything. The derivative of x squared is 2x, the sine of x we leave alone. And now the x squared we leave alone. 
and the derivative of the sine is the cosine. So we take that derivative and we slot it up there and we found h prime of x. 2x times the sine of x plus x squared times the cosine of x plus negative the sine of x, which is the same as minus the sine of x. And there is nothing to be done as far as simplifying this. We don't have any sine squared or cosine squared, so there is no hope for the Pythagorean identity. We're not multiplying trig functions, so there is no possibility that they'll cancel out like they do here. This is just our final answer in all of its kind of messy glory. I've said this before, but when you use the product rule and the quotient rule, it does unfortunately tend to make functions more complicated. You see, we started out with one product. We took the derivative and now we've got two products. So there's one example involving um, some products, involving some trig functions. Does anybody have any questions about this example? Or maybe just some more general questions about the product rule, about the trig functions, anything like that. I, okay, I'll take your, you at your word. I am trying to go through, slowly through this material because this would be a very bad place to start not understanding stuff. We're going to use this for the rest of the semester. So I really need you either to be telling the truth when you're not raising your hand, or if you just don't want to ask questions in front of the class, I need you to come to my office or to seek help from the library or something. This is a very very important material. But since nobody asked questions, as I say, I'll take you at your word. Let's look at something messier. Or at least I sort of say <laughs> this is messier. Let's say we have x squared divided by x times the secant of x plus two. Some sort of ugly function. And in particular, this is a quotient. So you see a lot of stuff here, right? You see a you see a power, you see a product, you see a sum. But if you kind of zoom out and look at what's happening here, sort of big picture. You see something being divided by something else. And if you've got division, that's the quotient rule, the, the ugliest of the um, differentiation rules we've learned, but we just need to take things slow, swap everything in at the right 
face. And that's remind ourselves what the quotient rule says. We have one function over another, and we want its derivative. Take the derivative of the top, leave the bottom alone, minus, leave the top alone, take the derivative of the bottom, and in the denominator, you don't take any derivatives, but you do square the denominator. And this is plug and play. I mean, we're going to take some derivatives and take some expressions, and we are going to just swap them into this formula. We just need to try not to make any little mistakes along the way. Unfortunately, calculus is a great field for making little mistakes because there are so many little things that can go wrong. You forget the negative sign, something like that, and you do all this work, but your answer at the end is completely incorrect. It can be very disheartening. But let's let's try to say it cool and see what we can do. We should start with the derivative of the top. Well, good news there, at least. The derivative of x squared just requires a quick application of the power rule. And we should multiply it by the bottom. So 2x times x times the secant of x plus 2. minus, and now we leave the top alone, and we take the derivative of the bottom. So what we have here is pretty similar to what we had here. I mean, we have a product plus something thing. So when we take the derivative of a sum, we want to take each of the individual derivatives and add them together. And one of those individual derivatives is really pretty straightforward. If you've just got a number, voting around by itself, not attached to anything else, its derivative is a zero. So the derivative of this two is a zero. X times the secant of X requires more thought. And I mean, just saying that out loud kind of points us in the right direction. Probably that yellow isn't super visible. Let's go with that. We've got something times something else. So when we take its derivative, it's going to require the product. So this is primarily a quotient rule problem, but 
but any of these derivatives you see up here in the upper right, this derivative or this derivative might require other rules. In this case, it requires the product rule. The derivative of x is one. The secant gets left alone. Now the x gets left alone. The derivative of the secant adding zero doesn't do anything. And I'm about to run out of space. So let's delete that plus zero to give me some room to write. The derivative of the secant is the secant times the tangent. So kind of a weird seeming form to the, the secant appears in its own derivative. And in the bottom, there are no derivatives being taken here. But we need to square the bottom as part of the quotient rule. And now what? That's a pretty I mean, oftentimes you just get ugly looking expressions and there's nothing you can do about it. Like back here, the derivative was uglier than what we started out with and there wasn't really any simplification to be done. I'm kind of running out of space here, but this, this fraction does simplify a little. Um, let's, now that we've taken the derivative, let's erase this. and work above it, which isn't ideal. If I could get the copy and paste thing function to work, our lives should be a little easier. But the simplification I'm talking about is just I mean, if you do this multiplication, it will kind of scream out to you 2x squared times the secant of x plus 4x squared minus x squared times the secant of x minus x cubed times the secant times the tangent. That four x squared would be four x. Uh, you're correct, thank you. Oh, divided, and I'm not going to, not going to foil with this. I mean, it's, it's nice to have stuff be factored. Let's just say it's factored and simplified. Uh, but what you see is that you've got two times x squared secant of x, and then you've got minus x squared secant of x, and those terms combine. So the minus x squared 
and the two gives us just the one x squared. And <laughs> this is the only um, the only simplification I think that you can do. It's very important. I mean, I still some do sometimes see this. It's very important not to be making kind of cottage algebra. Oops, did not mean to do that. Not to be making kind of cottage out. Thanks. Uh, cottage algebra errors and just start crossing off terms you see in the top and the bottom. Remember that we can only cancel the numerator and the denominator if we have multiplication in both. If we had like x times the secant divided by um, the tangent times the secant, then those secants would cancel. But up here, there's nothing else to do. You, um, I suppose you could pull an X out of the top, but I don't know that that's really simplifying so much as just rewriting it a little. Questions. <clears throat> this is, let's see. With 12 minutes left, I suppose the thing to do is probably just to do another problem. It's late in the day, it could be starting some new material. Let's look at a kind of more realistic, um, realistic quotient through example. I mean, this was kind of, oh, I erased it, but it was kind of extraordinarily ugly. Um, Something like this, on the other hand. You might expect to see in application. In fact, this is a classic sort of drug concentration function, which is why I use C of T as its name. And we're going to talk tomorrow about, we're going to start talking about applications and what it means to take this derivative of this and what the derivative is telling you. For now, let's just take the derivative. We recognize that we've got a quotient here. We've got something being divided by something else. So that calls for the quotient rule. And the quotient rule is ugly, but it's also bug and play. That is, it doesn't require any inventiveness on our part. There aren't any leaps of inspiration that we have to make. We just have to take a bunch of derivatives and slot them in where they belong. The derivative of 0.3t is 0 0.3. The 
denominator gets left alone minus, and now the numerator gets left alone. And we take the derivative of the denominator. And I said that the denominator was being squared, but I did not write it on the whiteboard. So there we go. And that's all there is to it. I mean, the quotient rule, I keep calling it ugly, but at the same time, I'm not being totally fair to it because I keep giving you these extravagantly hideous quotients that wouldn't appear in real world settings. When we had a slightly more realistic form to the, it wasn't so bad. And we would maybe want to simplify this a little. So let's move up here and let's see, two times 0.3 is 0 0.6, p square plus Point three minus uh, <coughs> one point two times P. And I guess nothing, nothing really cut, well, really, nothing combined up there. There's no really about it, but at least now we have it written as a quid question. It would be squared. Square. Okay, three times four Jeez, Thank you. Thinking back to what I said about how there are all of these little mistakes you can make. And now that we fixed that, the last statement I made is no longer true. We can combine stuff. We've got a 0.6 t squared minus 1.2 t squared. So that should be minus 0.6 p squared. And then the denominator. I'll leave alone. I think that's it for today. I don't mind spending a fast period on review as long as everybody ends the period with a good <laughs> understanding of the material.